The House Republicans in Rhode Island have woken up just a little bit. Welcome to my state of mind. I am Dan York. You know who you are. It's always a cheap throwaway line. I apologize for that. How are you? You doing good on this Tuesday in the pre-summer? It'll be formally summer any day now. What is it, June 21st, Laura? I think so. Uh, huh? Yeah, I think so. Uh, we're having a conversation. Uh, you can join us. Um, Pat Morgan and Bob Lancia, two Republican state reps. Pat was actually, Patricia Morgan was actually here. She doesn't like Pat or Patty. Don't call her Patty. <laughs> uh, she was here last week on some other miscellaneous issues like the Paw Sox and uh, Coventry and the like. And then she and other Republicans go ahead and fire up a press conference this week on alternative ways of funding the roads and bridge repair that's so necessary, according to Governor Raimondo. Um, they don't like the tolls. They want to fund the money inside the budget. I recorded a conversation with them yesterday because, you know, they're the General Assembly this afternoon. We taped this broadcast late in the afternoon for your viewing pleasure at 7.30, 11.30. So stay tuned for that. I have a short rundown this evening because we had a lengthy conversation with those two reps on those issues. So let us uh, just check in with a few thoughts that I had for this Tuesday. Is he? I don't know. He's entering the presidential race in what the New York Daily News calls a bizarre speech. Why would they say that? Let's roll a piece. Our country is in serious trouble. We don't have victories anymore. We used to have victories, but we don't have them. When was the last time anybody saw us beating, let's say, China in a trade deal? They kill us. I beat China all the time. <laughs> I, I got to tell you, and I shouldn't talk because it's not like I'm leading the league in good hair. But I have to tell you something. Every time I see the Donald, I just stare at his hair. I can't figure out what he, the whole time he runs for president. I'm going to be thinking about, you know, the hair. Uh, is that a piece, Laura? Or don't you don't know what it is? But I mean, he just goes flat. Down. I don't know what he's doing with that thing. Anyway, look. Uh, you could say that he is a breath of fresh air. You could say that he's a straight shooter. You can say that he cuts through it, and he's a leader. You can also say he filed for bankruptcy four times. You can also say he's a loose cannon. You can also say he's dangerous. But, you know, it's interesting because he thinks he's kind of a fresh voice on the presidential circuit, yet everybody knows him like an old shoe. So it's going to be very interesting, don't you think? But uh, welcome in, Donald. All right. Uh, this uh, really okay. Now she's taking interviews on the Today Show and the like. Here's the CNN headline. I think is that what we have? Yeah. Yes. Uh, I identify as black. Okay. Roll tape. Rachel Dolezal said on NBC's Today Show this morning that she identifies as black and that she has not been deceptive. This goes back to a very early age with my self-identification with the black experience um, as, as a very young child. Dolezal resigned yesterday as president of the NAACP chapter in Spokane, Washington. For nearly a decade, the 37-year-old civil rights advocate represented herself as a black woman, despite her white heritage, repeatedly claiming to have been the target of racially motivated incidents. But in 2002, she sued historically black Howard University, where she was a student, for discrimination because she was white. That case was dismissed. Oh, can we stop with this? Can we please stop with this? This is a hoax. This is a fantasy she has. This is a role play. I don't know what this is, but I know one thing. She lied, and she's a liar. And we are just fascinated by this whole thing because now we are all about, ever since Bruce Jenner, what's her, what's she now? Caitlin? Caitlin? Caitlin, Caitlin Jenner. Uh, and believe me, I get the transgender thing. I've done serious conversations about the transgender thing, and I respect the transgender challenge. There's no trans race challenge. You are who you are. You can hang with whoever you want to hang with, but you are who you are. Stop it. Just stop it. Thank you. When it comes to race, stop it. Please stop this. Not a good idea. 
David Cicilline, Democratic conspirator, running through the state with his federal piece of legislation that would make voting registration automatic at the DMVs, not a good idea. Quality versus quantity. This idea that Nellie Gore Bayer, our Secretary of State, and Jim Langevin, David Cicilline have to get you automatically enrolled to vote at the DMV, wrong-headed. Look, voting is a right for everybody in America, but it should be an active, active responsibility, not a passive, oh yeah, I guess I am registered, you know, troll to the voting booth and make your uninformed decision. Active, not passive. We're going to take a break here. Oh, actually, your state of mind is important to us. So i got to you know, include you. Just call us at uh, state of mind at myritv.com. You know how to get in touch with us on anything that I've had to say or what you'll see coming up. The Republicans active yesterday. Stay with us. All righty, welcome back in. Uh, just out of uh, fairness and complete transparency, we recorded this segment last night because, you know, it's hard to get legislators Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, because they keep pretending that they're too busy working. And the rise actually starts at the time that we do this show. You know what the rise is, don't you? It's this really fancy term for, let's go! You know, and they ring the bells and, you know. Anyway, um, headline from yesterday. The Bono's toll proposal is too risky, the Republicans argue. And here was State Representative Patricia Morgan running a press conference. We can find the money in a surplus. Instead of finding new ways to spend that money when it becomes available every spring, we can use it for bridges. We don't have to go find new targets. The Republican caucus claims tolls don't provide a guaranteed revenue source for road and bridge repair, which could still leave taxpayers on the hook. It's harmful, it's wastely as far as the borrowing, and it could be potentially very harmful to our economy, to our trucking industry, to all of the things that we're trying to do here to get our economy. So that was yesterday, but we're recording yesterday, so that's why Patricia Morgan's wearing the same wonderful outfit. <laughs> I know you worry about that kind of I stuff. I do, yeah. Like, wait a second, so I'm not wearing the same thing every day. <laughs> Me, I don't care, I just want a TV show. I, cha I do change my clothes. Oh, hello, day. Mr. Lancia, good to see you too. <laughs> you as well, Dan. Uh, first term uh, re representative, uh, representative Robert Lancia from Cranston. He replaced Peter Palumbo, you know, the guy who's got a little jammed up on some stuff, but uh, um, congratulations on winning your office. You enjoying yourself? You having fun? Um, it's been an interesting experience so far, yes. Why? Uh, just an opportunity to do so many different things, the people I've met, um, and uh, some of the committee that, I've, that I'm sitting on veterans as well as HEW, um, some of the testimony, and you know, just the people I've met and had an opportunity to work with so far. No one knows what HEW means. So now you're walking around with lingo now? Well, I'm a former Navy, and we were all into acronyms in the Navy, uh, too. Yeah, you know, I got so you get tied into that. I got the H-E-W going. <laughs> I got the, well, Health, education, and welfare. I knew, but no one else did. I did that for your benefit. I knew what it meant. I really That's did. The problem. I did. I did. I did. You know, throw me another acronym. I'll get, I'll get that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, At the rise, no. <laughs> so you, yesterday, say... Let's not borrow money for roads and bridges. Let's pay it out of the general fund. Explain your point of view. All right. The proposal is to raise $700 million for bridge repair. But just to borrow that much, you have to borrow an extra $200 million. The extra $200 million is what the banks require because this is an untested source of revenue, and they're not sure it's, it's stable. So instead of borrowing 700, we're going to borrow 900 million. So there's 200 million that we're borrowing we don't need. But then it's 35 to 45 well, million dollars in it. interest. We don't need it. Except they're need it. You're requiring. Saying, you're saying we won't use it for the purpose of, of the borrowing. bridges. Okay. You we won't it use it for bridge repair. Got it. Okay. Then we're going to pay 35 to 45 million dollars a year for 20 years. That's another 900 million dollars. So, so far we've got $1.1 billion extra to make $700 million worth of bridge repairs. That's kind of foolish, isn't it? I think it is. I think we can find the money in our budget every year for the next 10 to 12 years. We'll get $720 million over the same time frame that, that they're talking about now. They're talking about 10 years of bridge repair. So am I. And it won't cost us all that interest 
bond counsel. That's expensive. You remember Mr. Skeffington. He made himself a millionaire being a bond counsel, right? There's underwriting fees. The gantries themselves are like 40 to 60 million, and then there's maintenance on those gantries. They actually have to be replaced every five to seven years. Well, we're so th uh, we're talking money, money, money coming out of our economy. Okay. And what's the damage on our economy of that? You have the nuts and bolts of where the $60 million at least would come in this next fiscal year? Yes, um, actually I have a I list. I that because I was cheating. I yes, I have a list right here. In fact, I, I thought it was important to have it. Well, um, just a variety of things. There was It was actually money that the governor was going to take and actually from one place and put it to another. So we're saying when you take that money, rather than putting it somewhere else, to use that money for the uh, the uh, roads program. Right, people are right. Getting she actually wasn't already. putting it somewhere else. She was just taking it. Once upon a the time, budget. the governor put a budget together. And in that budget, she had $45 million worth of what is now the new term, scooping out of the budgets mm -hmm. to be able to say, hey, listen, we can take a little from here, a little bit from here, mm -hmm. because it looks like we got a deficit heading our way. Well, the main numbers turned out a little bit better, correct? And what she had proposed, the ones that transferred to the General Assembly, the House Speaker has encouraged it to go back in. Put the money back to in. To these departments. Right. So you think there's $45 million worth of scooping about that. in the budget ballpark, yeah. right? It's, it's actually yeah. the well, I didn't build a graphic and I showed it's that. It calls about 60, actually. Huh? It's about well, 40, then 50. Well, it's yeah. 15 million dollars in state spending reductions per in two percent. What in personnel and, th and that kind of it's, thing? It's it's co it's called turnover and efficiencies. Um, Governor Chafee used that was very successful in reigning in the in the in the cost of government. So we're just it, this is not new ground. It's the governor's own. All right, so just so, so people know, I just want to, I'm going to run down the categories, uh, uh, clean water finance, uh, Narragansett Bay Commission, tobacco settlement fund proceeds, Newport Grand Marketing, that one goes up your wazoo, I know. You don't like that one. Re, uh, re reflective license plate delays and uncompensated hospital care. These are, sorry to steal your notes. Nothing, no. Uh, so these are uh, things that you think the governor was willing to do away with. She was willing. It was That in her you would now like to hold her proposal. accountable for roads and bridges. At first glance, despite the House Speaker thinking that you're not credible and the Governor thinking that you're putting a Band-Aid on a broken leg, it sounds reasonable to me. And I think most people would like us to take care of roads and bridges, our part of it anyway, on a non borrowable basis. Well? We'd save a billion dollars. In terms of? Over. Debt service. Yep. That's worth saving. Okay. So where does this conversation go? I want your perspective as a new legislator. Where do you think it goes? Because the House Speaker thinks you guys are all a joke and the, and the governor is making fun of you. Well, that's actually not my impression, but... Well, um, what, what is your impression? It's my impression. Well, my impression is that the um, we have had dialogue with the Speaker, that um, we've had a good... I think the, our minority leader, uh, Brian Newberry, has said that um, that it is a different uh, atmosphere uh, in terms of that uh, he is listening to what we have to say and so uh, and I think I think the governor would as well um, that that's my hope anyway maybe they won't but I, I think there's been dialogue and they've been interested Representative in listening. Morgan 60 million dollar amendment introduced one day before the budget's not being uh, before the budget's being considered it's not a realistic solution or roads and bridge needs it's certainly not ready for introduction in the budget all right can I say something Dan of course you can we know that there was a Paw Sox Stadium proposal on the on the on the table not too long ago I know I spoke up against it immediately and and I think it's up to the folks of this state to say we, we don't want all of this extra borrowing and spending and gantries and and the moral hazard that that's there you put up toll booths and that the revenue from the trucks don't come in who do you think they're going to go to next they have to pay off the bonds once those bonds are issued they have to be paid off and if there's not enough revenue from trucks it will go lower so I don't think the people want tolls. So they rose up with us against that, that stadium proposal. I think they can ra rise up here. I think we got a knee-jerk reaction from the speaker and the governor. I'm hoping that they will be more reasonable and look at this proposal, because it's a good one. When we come back, the game plan on how to make that happen. Stay with us. There's no Rhode Island deal here. The horse is out of the barn. It's federal and they're gonna pay just like 
the bigs coming through. I'm, I'm disappointed. As a, as, a, as a native of Rhode Island, I'm, I'm disappointed. I, I'm, I'm disappointed and shocked that they would roll out a plan of this magnitude not having done their homework. That's Christopher Maxwell from the Rhode Island Truckers Association reflecting on Governor Raimondo's push out. You know, she was 18 wheelers and up. Her staff was saying classification six and seven trucks. I mean, it was just a mess. And it's not good. It's not a good last two weeks for Governor Raimondo in pushing out a toll solution for the trucks to repair roads and bridges and to have the whole thing stop right in front of the budget process. So she's got some repair work to do. You seize this moment. The House Speaker has said, all right, you got a $60 million plan in terms of reallocation of our resources. Why did you throw it to me a day before the budget? So he's, he's complaining about your timing. What about your timing? Well, I mean, she just came out three weeks ago. I think her budget, I mean, I think her plan was unrealistic and not very well conceived. I think we put this together over the last week. We actually, our leader went and spoke with him. This, this isn't just being plopped in his lap. We really thought it through. We asked him to look at it. Our time constraints were also there. Your, your colleague, uh, Representative Morgan, is suggesting that the people will rise up for this just like they did in opposition to, say, uh, the stadium, at least the, the, the former stadium representation from the, the Paw Sox. How are you going to make that happen? I, I think it's I think really initially it's the um, it's the trucking companies themselves I mean they're the ones that really got the ball rolling but I think it's it's we, we've got such a short time frame it is going to be difficult I mean there's no two ways about it we're voting going to be voting on the budget um, well you don't, well you don't have a you don't have a you don't have a crisis on the truck toll thing there's no plan yet there's no plan yet but the people can are we going to get a special it. session is that what, are you hearing a special that's discussion for the truck tolls and the paw socks kind of mm -hmm. come on back Nothing in late definite. september no but that's no. what we had heard as, as a possibility and yeah. so between now and then we need to continue to do our homework and and get the word out there here's so. the thing you got a 60 million dollar idea for next fiscal year but beyond that you're like i don't know we got to find it well and, and that's the nature of the budgeting process if we have a commitment to, buy, to find 60 to 70 million in a budget, we will. But there's nothing that we, there's, unless we establish a program right now and say we're gonna fund it with bonds, you, you can't do that, right? You ha actually have to find the money in the budget each and every year. There has to be a commitment from leadership. We have a commitment, we'll find it every year. How's that? You know, the psychology of the, of the voters and the constituents and the people who feed back is kind of interesting. Since you cite the Paw Sox Stadium thing, that was, no, we, we, we don't want to spend that money on that, meaning we don't want $120 million worth of dish out to the Paw Sox ownership simply to come into the city of Providence. It didn't feel well. I don't know what the no factor is on the truck toll bridge road finance thing. I don't think it's as dramatic to the constituents. And so I what are you, you going to do to try to... I think it's brand new for them still. I think once they get the, the, the idea, once they get the knowledge that there is an alternative that doesn't require borrowing, doesn't require tolling, I think that they will favor that. Nobody wants a billion dollars worth of interest and gantry, really, that we're going to waste? Yeah. yeah. As I, listen, I'm a financial advisor. I know people like bonds. I like to sell bonds, but I don't think the taxpayers it, it's need It's a rock and a hard them. place for everybody, I think. The governor was way over her skis, but she, to her credit, has said, we got this big, huge problem of roads and bridges. Now, everybody's kind of agreeing that we got this whole big road and bridge problem. Now, it's just a question of how. And the truckers are saying, not us, but we'll pay some gas tax, and so should everybody else. And while the gas prices are still under $3 a gallon, which I don't know is going to last very long, People go, oh, okay, well, maybe. That's not so bad. Yeah, um, I'm not in favor of a gas tax increase. I'm not. I think we can find the money in our budget, and I think we just need to do it. We need to find 60 to $70 million every year for 10 to 12 years, and the problem will be solved. People complain about the gas tax that exists right now not, not funding exactly what it was designed to fund, especially when they took the trust fund away. Do you agree that that's been kind of a problem? Uh, I was at a series of collaboratives they've been holding at the Rhode Island Foundation, and uh, one of the presenters was Dr. Nicole Martino from Rodgers University, and she made the point at one of those collaboratives that only one of every 17 cents that is collected, in fact it was in the Providence Journal, uh, actually goes 
to roads and bridges that the other sixteen cents was going into the general fund to fund other things and in fact i heard from a constituent today after the story was posted and you know she was making the point well we have this problem what are we going to do about it and i just made the point that we've had a series of problems and you know and so it's kind of becoming a cumulative effect you know i think you're talking about the stadium i think that's a bit of a hangover from the thirty eight studios i know but you can go back and i don't want to get off topic but i mean you go back you know the can you know we go back to the credit union all these things so it's you know it's just been kind of i agree i just wish you republicans had actually stepped up when and can still do it the, the kind of 38 studio investigation we should have had. It's an amendment tomorrow. Huh? What? <laughs> it's not. It's amendment when? It's tomorrow. Meaning today, since we recorded oh, this yesterday. Oh, today. Yes, Tuesday. Because you got the same suit on. <laughs> well, I'll be I'll be looking forward to to seeing that. I don't want to get sidetracked. The politics of this. Talk to me about it. I can't be a hypocrite and sit here and bang on you guys for working constructively on a finance option. I'm always screaming, where the hell are you? Now you show up, I look at this, I gotta take a good hard look at it. But there's a condition in this state that when you guys speak up, it's kind of like, you know, it's, uh, well, you know, the learning disabled. You know, it's like, oh, that's the... Uh, Stop it. They're the special ed politicians. No. I'm serious. That's the way the Republican Party is viewed by the momentum of the Democratic establishment and now a Democratic governor. So you've got a lot to overcome even it's though your idea may be practical. Well, and I so appreciate you actually saying that because if you remember, we met once before at the East Greenwich Armory. We were there with Stephen Laffey, with um, Larry Valencia, and a couple of the people. You were the moderator. And I was the gentleman who stood up and said, you have said on the radio that the Republican Party is the gang that can't shoot straight. And I said that day, I agreed with you. Mm. But I also have to tell you, um, that the group we have there right now, the 11 Republicans and then you had uh, are the independent that caucuses with Blake Filippi, the 12 of us, we have, I think, uh, an outstanding group of people, especially some of our new people, uh, Bobby Natalillo, uh, Justin Price, Sherry Roberts. Uh, we've got some good new people, Blake Filippi, great ideas, Dan Riley coming back, some great people and some leadership like Patricia, like are Joe Trillo. Well, We're uh, shooting straight now. Are all I agree? All twelve of you, twelve of you in the uh, larger phone booth on the same page. Is this unanimous amongst the Republicans that this is the plan that we ought to use? Yes. Listen, this is just everybody. A yes. Common sense solution to a problem we have. We need to get bridges fixed, mm. but we need to do it without borrowing and without tolling. Right. We, we, have, we have met and we've talked and we've said as much as possible we need to be working as a group because if we're not we will not be successful and I think you know personalities of strong personalities and you know in every group I mean it's been just for me as a new person and I know the other ones uh, the other new members we've just enjoyed working with everyone and I think there is a sense of I think uh, mission and I think Brian Newberry's been doing a great job, and, and I think we've got a good group of people up there right now that are working hard together for All the right. most part. Uh, this will be a conversation. And we're thinking about weeks. taxpayers. Okay. That's right. And we'll see. Uh, we'll see whether or not the Democrats are able to dismiss this, or whether you create momentum. We'll be right back. Thank you. You know, the House Speaker would do well to give the House Republicans a little bit of respect. You know, talking about paying for things for the with the money that we actually have is not a gadfly idea by any stretch, so we'll see. Tomorrow night, U.S. Attorney Peter Narona will be in here to talk about the former Speaker Gordon Fox, corruption at all. So make an appointment, and I'll see you tomorrow at noon on WPRO.